welcome back. Today we will continue our discussion of Lecture 5-3 with more examples of designing a lag compensator or a lag lead compensator. The objectives are to describe the benefits of using lag and lead compensation for control system design, to apply lag and lead compensation to approve the characteristics such as steady state accuracy, phase, and gain margin of a control system. Lag compensation improves the steady state error but increases your transient response time. In addition, lag compensation suppresses the effects of high frequency noise signals. It improves low frequency characteristics where bandwidth is reduced and stability margins may be maintained or improved. Figure two presents the Bode diagram for a lag compensator and illustrates that it is a low pass filter with a negative phase angle. Note, notice that omega sub m, which is the minimum of the phase angle, is the geometric mean of the two corner frequencies, which is one over beta t and 1 over t, which also represent z lag and p lag. So the lag compensator is represented by the transfer function g c of s equal to k c times s plus z lag over s plus p lag, or k c times s plus 1 over t lag divided by s plus 1 over beta t lag, where beta is greater than 1. Steps to design a lag compensator. Determine the gain K to satisfy the steady state error requirement, ESS, or let K equal 1. This is similar to the first step for a lead compensator. Plot the Bode diagram or the open loop transfer function with the gain K found in step 1. If the required phase margin PM is not given, calculate the damping ratio zeta from the percent overshoot and the required phase margin from zeta. Step 3 is to calculate the phase angle at the minimum phase, negative 180 plus PM plus 10. Notice that 10 is just a correction factor, so 5 or 10 would be acceptable there. Step 4, search the Bode diagram for the frequency omega sub m and the magnitude m at the required phase angle phi sub m. Step 5 is to set the gain factor beta equal to the m found in step 4. Step 6 is to find the lag compensator corner frequencies or Z lag equal to 0.1 omega sub m and P lag equal to Z lag over beta. And finally, calculate the compensator gain, KC equal 1 over beta. All right, let's try an example. In class activity, design the lag compensator for the control system with the following open loop transfer function to have a static error gain, KV equal 20, and a 10% overshoot. The transfer function is G of S is equal to 100K over S times S plus 10 times s plus 100. Okay, what I've given you here are two Bode plots. The first one is the uncompensated Bode diagram, and the second one is the compensated Bode diagram. For the first one, we find k to satisfy the static error constant or the steady state error requirement, and then we create the Bode plot and determine the gain and phase margins on it. What you should notice here is that the gain margin is 14.8 decibels, and the phase margin is 31.7 degrees, and since this is a minimum phase system, this is a stable system for that K. On the right, the red line represents the compensated system, and you can see that it has our signature dip in it here that represents that this is a phase lag compensator, and then that the phase margins are actually improved after adding the compensator, so that the phase margin is now 63.9 degrees. We're now going to walk through the steps to determine how we created this compensator. This third graphic is actually the ramp response. We use this to confirm that we are actually going to satisfy the static error requirement, KV equal to 20. And you can see here that the uncompensated system actually does not track the ramp at all. This represents the green dotted line that appears to be going infinitely far away from the ramp. Okay, first let's find K. So the way we do that is we know that KV is equal to the limit as s approaches 0 of s g of s, which is equal to 100k over 10 times 100, and we set that equal to 20. So when we solve for k, k is equal to 200. So this was step one, and then step two was we created this Bode plot here using a gain of k equal to 200. Okay, so the 10% overshoot means that zeta is equal to the square root of the natural log of 0 0.1 squared divided by pi squared 
plus the natural log of 0 0.1 squared, which equals 0 0.591. And the phase margin is equal to the arc tangent of 2 zeta over the square root of negative 2 zeta squared plus the square root of 1 plus 4 zeta to the fourth, which equals 58.59 degrees. So now we're going to find phi sub m. Phi sub m is equal to negative 180 plus the desired phase margin plus that 10 degree fudge factor, which equals negative 111.4 degrees. So now we go to the uncompensated Bode diagram and we try to find the frequency where we have negative 111 degrees. So if we come here and we estimate, we'll estimate the frequency right here, negative 111 degrees is 3.52 radians per second. I actually did this in MATLAB, which is why it's so accurate. And the magnitude right here is 5.3562. Notice that this is the absolute magnitude not the magnitude in decibels. So what we've gotten here is that omega m is equal to 3.52 radians per second, and m is equal to 5.3562 at phi sub m equal negative 111 degrees. So we set beta equal to omega m, which equals 5.3562, So we set beta equal to m, which equals 5.3562. Z lag is equal to 0 0.1 omega sub m, which is 0 0.352. P lag is equal to Z lag over beta, which equals 0 0.0657. And Kc is equal to one over beta, which equals 0 0.1867. And finally, our answer for the compensator, G C of S is equal to 0 0.1867 times S plus Z lag, 0 0.352, divided by S plus P lag, S plus 0 0.0657. Now let's do a lag lead compensator example. A lag lead compensator is used to improve the transient and steady state response of a control system. The design technique involves adjusting the gain K to satisfy the steady state error requirements. The next step is to use the lag compensator to maintain the steady state characteristics and use the lead compensator to meet the transient characteristics such as phase and gain margin, percent overshoot, settling time, and peak time. Figure one shows the Bode diagram of the lag lead compensator and you should note that here, since it's a lag and lead cascaded together, it is a low pass and high pass filter cascaded together, which creates a band reject filter. The signature for the lag lead compensator is that you see these two humps in the phase. One of them is a dip down for the lag compensator. The other one is a peak for the lead compensator. So the expression for lag lead compensator is G C of S is equal to G lag times G lead or S plus Z lag over S plus P lag times S plus Z lead over S plus P lead. We can also express this in terms of the corner frequencies, S plus one over T lag divided by S plus one over beta T lag times S plus one over T lead divided by S plus one over alpha T lead, where alpha is between zero and one and beta is greater than one. Note that we could have a gain here, KC, as we've had for lead and lag compensators, but typically what you would have is that K lag would equal one over alpha and K lead is equal to one over beta. And a lot of times we make alpha equal one over beta so that K lag times K lead would just be one, which is why we don't have a gain. We've already introduced a several 
formulas that we use for this design in our series of lectures, but here are a few more. Note you can also refer back to the prior lectures if there's another formula that you need that's not listed here. One of them is the sine of phi sub m is 1 minus alpha over 1 plus alpha. Omega sub m equals 1 over the square root of alpha times t. The natural frequency is equal to 4 over ts times zeta. The natural frequency is also equal to pi over the time to peak times the square root of 1 minus zeta squared. The bandwidth is equal to the natural frequency times the square root of 1 minus 2 zeta squared plus the square root of 4 zeta to the fourth minus 4 zeta squared plus 2. And the phase margin is equal to the arctangent of 2 zeta over the square root of negative 2 z squared plus the square root of 1 plus 4 zeta to the fourth power. Steps to design a lag lead compensator. Determine the gain k to satisfy the steady stair error requirement. Plot the Bode diagram of the open loop transfer function with the gain k found in step one. Determine the uncompensated phase margin pm from the Bode diagram. If the required phase margin is given, go on to step four. If it's not given, then calculate the damping ratio from the percent overshoot and calculate the required phase margin from the damping ratio. Step four, determine the compensator's required phase angle, phi equal to negative quantity, 180 plus theta, plus the required phase margin plus five. Step five, calculate the attenuation factor for a lag compensator alpha equal to one minus sine phi over one plus sine phi, and for the lead compensator beta equal to one over alpha. Step six is to find the new phase margin frequency. If the time to peak and or settling time are given, calculate the required natural frequency from the time to peak, or TS, then calculate the required bandwidth from the natural frequency. Then let the new phase margin frequency equal omega pm equals 0.8 times the bandwidth. Note you can use the formulas at the top of this page to make those calculations. If the time to peak and or settling time are not given, set omega sub pm equal to the uncompensated phase crossover frequency omega pc, which you can get from that uncompensated Bode diagram in step two. Then for the lead compensator, use the frequency omega sub m to get the corner frequencies t lead equal one over omega p sub m times the square root of alpha. So z lead is equal to omega p sub m times the square root of alpha or one over t lead. And z lead, p lead is equal to z lead divided by alpha. Finally, the lag compensator, step nine, set z lag equal to 0 0.1 omega sub m and p lag equal to z lag over beta. In class activity one, for the control system with the following open loop transfer function, design a lag lead compensator to have a phase margin of at least 50 degrees and a static error constant kv equals 20. So g of s is equal to 2k over s times s plus 2 times s plus 5. So the first thing we do is we use kv to find k. So kv is equal to the limit as s approaches 0 of s g of s, which equals 2k over 10 and set that equal to 20. So k is equal to 100. That's step one. Step two, I create this Bode diagram at k equal to 100. And what you should see here is that the gain margin is negative 8.12 decibels and the phase margin is negative 24.2 degrees. We have a minimum phase system here, which means that for that value of k, the phase margin and the gain margin are both less than zero, which means that we have an unstable system. So when we design our lag and lead compensator, it will also have to create a stable system by adding enough phase back to put this in the stable range. So first thing we do is we were given that the required phase margin is 50 degrees, and we see from the plot that the phase crossover frequency is 3.16 radians per second. So we make the phase margin frequency equal to the phase crossover frequency. So it's also 3.16 radians per second. And theta is found by searching the plot to find the point at negative at 3.16 radians per second. Since this is our phase crossover frequency, we know that theta is equal to negative 180 degrees at omega pm equal to 3.16 radians per second. So the phase angle at phi m 
is going to be equal to negative the quantity 180 plus theta plus the phase margin plus that five degree fudge factor which equals 55 degrees. So next we're going to find beta. Beta is equal to one plus sine phi over one minus sine phi. So beta is equal to 10. Alpha is equal to the reciprocal of beta. So alpha is equal to one over beta or 0 0.1 and z lag is equal to 0 0.1 times omega pm. So the zero for the lag compensator is 0 0.316 and p lag is equal to z lag over beta, which is equal to 0 0.316 and z lead is equal to omega pm times the square root of alpha, which is equal to one and P lead is equal to Z lead over alpha, which equals one, which equals 10, sorry. And finally, the compensator. GC of S is equal to S plus 0 0.316 over S plus 0 0.0316 Note that there was a zero missing here. I do apologize for that. And the lead compensator is S plus one over S plus 10. So now let's examine our Bode diagram after adding in the compensator. Notice that the blue line is our uncompensated system. It's the same Bode diagram we had before. And the red line is our compensated system. So it does have that signature dip and then that peak in the phase to indicate that a lag lead compensator was added. And you see here that the phase margin is now increased into the stable range as is the gain margin. The phase margin is now 53.5 degrees, which is about 1.5 degrees below what we required, but good enough to meet our requirements. And that we now have a system that does have an increased phase margin at 2.91 radians per second. And we had selected our omega sub m to be around three. So that's acceptable as well. So now if we look at the response of the system to the ramp, that red dashed line indicates that the original uncompensated system was unstable, which means it was never gonna follow a ramp at all because it wasn't gonna stabilize, it wasn't type one. But then the green line represents our input and the blue line represented our compensated system. And what you can see is that it is tracking the ramp and it does converge on that KV equal 20 or one over 0.05 steady state error. And this concludes today's lecture on designing a lag and a lag lead compensator. Have a great day.